like, you know, what the person has gone through, you know, we, we just really don't know. And so I just like to remind myself that it's not me who is the solution. It's not me who has the right answers. I have no right answers other than pointing them to the one who does. And it's just, to me, it's just so important to remind myself of that because I feel like sometimes for me and maybe even just in hum as human beings in general, it can, it can be easy just to want to be that solution. But um, that's actually the hardest thing to do and to be, and it's not our place to feel. And so anyways, I'm just going to pray and yeah, I'll kind of take you along for the walk as I go into the ER section. So Jesus, I just ask that you would just give me the words to say, God, I pray that she would see the love of Jesus through my eyes, God, that she would feel the love of Jesus, Lord, and how you totally go after the one, um, that she is the one that it, that is worth everything, God, which you have given up your life for her. And so I just pray, Lord, that she would see that, Lord, that she would feel your love, God, and she would know that you care, God, and that you see her in her pain and her weakness, and you see her in the trauma, God, and that um, you are able to promise her a life that is full of healing and restoration, and that it's not always easy, but it's worth it. I just thank you. Thank you for this life. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys. So I just thought I'd show you just uh, what we bring to them. This is our love bags. They have different knickknacks and like toiletries and things like that. They have this bag full of other toiletries and then an encouraging note that says stay strong. Um, but they have different notes on them and then some comfy pants and our famous shirt that says loved. So anyways, I'll get to it and take y'all along. Okay guys, so I'm on my way to the hospital, like the ER entrance, which is usually where a client would be. And like I said, it, you know, we meet these clients because SANE nurses that are working in the hospital, which they're, it stands for sexual assault nurses, they are the ones that connect with the client first as the first responder. And then they determine whether, you know, the client has been showing signs of being trafficked or if it was a sexual assault incident but if they have been showing signs of being trafficked then that's whenever we come in so I'm on my way in sorry it's a bit loud um, glad you guys can come and I will connect with you guys um, once I get out so stay tuned all right, so I am back, just got out of the ER, um, was able to talk to the young lady. You know, I just always find it really um, a blessing to be able to be a voice that just brings hope in the midst of what seems like there's just no hope or you can't even, you know, the person can't even imagine like what, like what life can be like after uh, enduring something so traumatic. I just, I just feel super blessed to be able to be in, in this position to bring that hope. Um, so this visit was a little bit more different than usual. You know, um, there's the same nurses, the nurses that help the clients. They do a really great job at making sure, you know, patients have the resources that they need. And so uh, that includes another organization um, that they help women who have uh, who have been sexually assaulted. So not specifically human trafficking, um, but sexual assaults, and they help with just resources, uh, which is great. However, we you know we're able to you know help with housing and things of that nature. So basically, the other organization was there as well as you know as us coming along, and so it can kind of be a little bit overwhelming for the client sometimes if they're if they're being questioned by different people like the nurse and then if they have a detective that is doing work on their case or something or you know or yeah or another or another organization so um when I came in I was um I didn't want to like you know have her reshare her story and that's something really sensitive to them and so in this case I didn't I didn't ask her those questions um yeah, it's already hard enough for them to share it once, you know, and having to relive what happened. 
Um, but um, there are questions I obviously had to ask um, in terms of in order for us to know if we're able to house them or not. So it is it is not always um, like even if we have the space, it's not always um, a guarantee that we can house someone because we don't have 24 seven staff there. And so um, sometimes whenever clients um, show that they have certain, you know, they're dealing with certain challenges, like if it's suicidal thoughts or just like or if it's, you know, different different risks that we're not uh we're not prepared for then unfortunately we have to redirect them to a different uh place for housing however we still make contact and make sure that we can still uh be a support system for them so anyways that's just kind of giving you more of an insight of how of how we even accept ladies into our crisis house um because it's not always a, a for sure thing however we do accept as many women as we can um, and if we're able to, but we also want to make sure that we're capable. So in this case, uh, you know, this, this patient is still going to stay in the hospital for some, a little bit of time, but we're going to still make contact with her and uh, see what resources we can provide for her and be able to point her into the right direction. So, yeah, and that looks, um, again, you know, we, we like to ask these women, like, what do you, you know, what do you see yourself doing? What do you see yourself like, what do you want, you know, out of your recovery? And does it look like a long-term program? Does it look like you just want to like, you just want to be in normal life again? Or like, does it look like you need to go to a, a detox center or, you know, certain things? So we just like to ask them the, the questions and uh, just empower them to make those decisions. You know, we do try our best to, um, just put our, you know, advice into it, um, in terms of like, you know, we've seen ladies in their journeys and we have, you know, had the opportunity to witness like what does work best for women who are working through these, through these challenges and, and traumatic experiences. Um, so we definitely like to give our feed, you know, our feedback and just what we, what, uh, we feel would, would help them, but ultimately it's their decision, you know? And they have to want that if, if, if presented the opportunity, you know. And unfortunately, that's not always something they choose. Um, but we have seen before where we've helped women and then they've gone back to, you know, whatever they were doing before. But then, like, later on, they contact us again and they're like, okay, like, I'm ready, you know. And a lot of that is tied into... Uh, just the fact that drug addiction is so involved in human trafficking and it doesn't always seem as easy as it looks you know um, there might be misconceptions of just like well why doesn't someone just get out like you don't want to be sexually assaulted all day you know which is obviously true but it's not always that simple because when drugs are tied into it there's that addiction and then you know even the mindset of like I, you know, women literally thinking like, I've, you know, I've dealt with this all my life. Why does it matter? And sometimes the thought of like what my life could look like and what my future could look like, that tends to be sometimes a little bit more frightening because you're not sure what the future could look like um, whenever you haven't ever tried that. So anyways, just kind of giving you a little bit of an insight of what that, what that's, you know, what that looks like and what we've seen. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for just tagging along and I hope this was encouraging to you. And if you can just also just be in prayer for the women that we do come, come see and that they would see the hope that is so promised to them and that there is life. There is life at the end of the tunnel. There is hope at the end of the tunnel. And actually, even while they're going through the tunnel, um, as I'm even thinking about that now, even, you know, as they choose to take that step to to say, I do want to get out of this. And I, and I do want to believe that there's better for myself. Also just pray for the women that we're currently helping now that they would just continue to stay on the right track 
And a major prayer request for the women that we're helping now is just that, that they would feel at peace, that they wouldn't feel overwhelmed with the cares of life, but that they would just take it a step at a time and know that it will all come together and that the Lord is working on their behalf. So anyways, again, thank you. Bless you. Thank you so much for your partnership in prayer and, and financial partnership as well. Uh, yeah, just really appreciate you. Have a good one. See you next time. Good luck.